Hello everybody, thank you so much for joining me on my channel and welcome to another Distress Oxide colour combination video. Now today we're looking at black soot, which might sound a little odd. Why do we need to look at black? It's a neutral and we know what it does, it just darkens things. Um, is it really worth looking into colour combinations? Well, absolutely yes it is. It's a fantastic colour for deepening, adding shadows, adding depth to absolutely any colour blend. You really can, being a neutral, add black soot to anything. And it's worth noting as well, if you're used to the Distress inks rather than oxides, black soot is actually very different. This is actually more of a, I think it's a charcoal rather than a black, so it's a really deep grey. Um, and because it's got that sort of creamy property to it. So let me just first of all put this on to a piece of card for you, just white card so you can really see the colour. And I'll pop that against something that is black also, just so you can see the difference. Now, usually with black soot, I would put it on at the end of my colour combinations, just because then I can blend in as much or as little as I want. And it's one of those colours where you don't want to put too much on. Now let me just bring in a little slip of black cardstock that I have here. This is a solid black, so you can see the difference. So it's not a deep, dark black. It's actually more of a grey, a charcoal colour. Um, if you want a really, really deep black, you're better off going for the black soot, but in the Distress Ink range. So while I've got this down here, let's just wipe this up a little bit. And let's do a colour combination with some greens. Yes, black into green is beautiful. Now, iced spruce and peel paint. Now, as I said earlier, actually, I prefer to go do my colours and then add the black afterwards. So I'm going to start with my peeled paint at the other end and then put the uh, iced spruce in the middle and we'll, we'll sort of see how we go. Now, peeled paint is a beautiful, beautiful green. It's a really bright, um, green with a very much a yellow base to it it's gorgeous it's also it can be quite vintage too if you want it to be um, it works with things like corals and pinks really well I'm going to put quite a bit of that down there we go that's a lovely color isn't it and then let's put this into iced spruce so iced spruce is actually one of my favorite colors and it sat, the poor, poor ice spruce sat in my storage with all my other distress oxides and distress inks and I really didn't pay it much attention because I just thought it's sort of a grey, didn't really want to use it very much. Once I got it out and I started playing with it, I did it once, I mixed it with, I think it was festive berries for a Christmas card and yeah, I was blown, I just think it's absolutely beautiful. Now I'm a sucker for any teal colour, this is like a duck egg green duck egg blue it's so pretty I really love it and look how beautifully that has just blended into there now let's add some more here I will go back and blend this these greens in together a bit better in a moment but let's bring this into the black soot now like I say usually I wouldn't have this much black soot down I'd actually use it just on the very very edge just around the corners just to frame my project now you can see that the ice spruce is actually going over the black soot nicely. It's starting to deepen that colour. And I am going to come back in. Let's just wipe some of this away, some of the excess. Come in with what's on my brush from the black soot and just break down any of those harsh lines a little bit there as well. And I keep, often keep going over like so. I do need to just come back and reinstate this one. There we go. So when that's dry and you don't have, so we've obviously got the shiny lines where it's still damp, but you've got an absolutely gorgeous colour blend there. So, so pretty. Now you can play with the levels, how much of each one you have, but isn't that great if you want something neutral, something toned down, not too bright, maybe something masculine. I think that's just really lovely. Um, and you can actually switch this up for a blue as well from Ice Spruce because it's got very much um, some blues in it too. So the choice is yours with that one. So talking about blues, let's go on to a three colour blend. Let's just give my mat a wipe with a wet wipe just to remove the greens so we don't get the greens 
into the blue and dry that off. Pop those green brushes aside. And like I say, I'm going to do the black soot last. So I'm going to start the other end. Now, I've got a choice here. I can, I think I'll work this way. So we're going from into the darker colours. Earlier, in an earlier video, when we were talking about antique lace, um, we were talking about going into the lighter colours. So, sorry, not antique lace, antique linen. linen. We're talking about going into lighter, paler colours. With the black, you're going to want to go into your darker colours, ideally, if you can. So I'm going to work in this combination. So I'm going to start with weathered wood. Put some of this blue down. This is a lovely grey blue. So it's a grey that's got a cool base to it and it will just blend so nicely into almost any blue or teal colour. And it is a pastel, so um, it's not too strong in colour, so it will kind of blend into lots of different shades, different colourways. If you want to go into a lilac, for example, you can do that. You could even take that into something like scattered straw, a nice pastel yellow, and again, that one will work. But we'll come to all of these colours individually after a time. Stormy Sky here, a lovely, again, it's, it's not a bright blue, it's not a bright blue, but um, it has got a really nice chalky base to it. Let's just do the blending. This is quite a new ink pad, so a bit more ink has gone down. So I'm just going to use my weathered wood to blend that line between the two. There we go, happy with that. Now what's left on the brush, I'm going to just gently try to do a faded line a bit. I might have to do more blending in a moment. And Chip Sapphire, a lovely deep blue. Let's just go straight across the middle here. Now this is a much older ink pad, I've used this a lot. So I need to press down a bit harder to get the full coverage with this. Now what I find the trick with black soot to do is to actually um, put down your base colour first, unless you really want lots of black. If like me here, we're just going to be looking at darkening the very end of this strip, I'm going to put the chipped sapphire all the way down to the bottom. Like I say, not such a juicy ink pad this one, so just applying lots of ink round in circles, making sure there's no white cardstock. And sometimes that does mean just going round in different directions, up and down, and ensuring that you've got full coverage there. Okay, so now I've got my blue, and now I come in with my black, which most of the time I wouldn't do, but because I don't want too much, I'm going to do it here. And I'm just going to capture the very end to start with. And just see it starting to darken there. And that way you can make black soot really work for any colour. Just giving it a bit of a darker frame, a bit of a sort of vintage vignette look. I'm going to come back in with my chip sapphire. Make sure that's a nice blend through there. There we go. Isn't that gorgeous? A night sky maybe, a deep sea, whichever way you want to it either way isn't that beautiful so they are two color blends you can use three color and four color all using or looking at black soot as a bit of difference because it's certainly not a color that we'd often think about within our color combinations but well worth having in your stash and like I say as a neutral it really is going to blend nicely into virtually any other color you have in your stash so please check out the links to see where I've got everything from my blending mat my blending brushes and of course the ink pads as well. You'll find uh, Distress Ink colour charts and labels free to download on my website that's also linked below and please do subscribe if you haven't done before because I'm going to be doing a video for every colour in the Distress Oxide range comparing them and having a look at the different colour combinations like this one. Take care everybody, I'll see you again very soon.